We're in the end game now. Howdy, how's it going? My name's Davy Chappie, and welcome to what is presumably the last in the recent trend of bi-weekly Unearthed Arcana releases. Unless the crawfish himself decides to surprise us with another release in two weeks, fingers crossed. But this new article brings things full circle by hitting on the last of the core races that haven't yet gotten that lovin', the fighter, the ranger, and the rogue. So no need to beat around the bush, let's smack that like button and subscribe to the new subclasses, starting with the Rune Knight. Rune Knights are the type of fighters that actually bothered with listening to the tutorial about how to add enchantments to your weapon, and now use these enchantments to pull off crazy skills that everyone thinks is cheating, but it's okay because the giant developers say that it's totally legit, guys. As a rune knight, you start out with proficiency in smith tools, and you can speak, read, and write giant because apparently the only people in the world smart enough to craft tiny and intricate symbols into a weapon are... <sighs> giants, and you also gain the power of understanding the ANCIENT RUNES OF POWER! Letting you choose two from a list of runes that each represent a different type of giant, and then you can inscribe those runes onto objects to give them added effects, both passive and active, such as resisting damage, dealing fire damage, getting better in intimidation and animal handling, hotboxing people with the power of clouds, or either helping or hindering an attack that you can see. You also get another ability at third level that lets you call out IT'S MORPHIN TIME, and anamorph into a version of you vaguely mixed with a giant, effectively acting as an innate enlarged spell, but with d6s instead of a d4. After all of that coolness, your future abilities give you access to more runes, you can spend your reaction to defend an ally, you grow like it was puberty, you gain a stronger handling on the runes that you do know, and you can choose another creature whenever you bloat into Andre the Giant, and that person also grows to maximum thickness. So I won't lie, this class looks really cool, and the balance is perfectly fine for the 10 minutes of scanning it that I did. Yeah, if you really want to get tricky, then maybe you're getting too much at level 3, but but I think it's fine. The hill giant rune is a little much, since it basically gives you the defensive prowess of a barbarian, and even though you can only do it once, or twice once you hit 15th level, you still get the ability back on a short rest instead of a long rest, so it might be too much of a conflict of interest. Other than that, the scaling is all really focused on the active abilities of the runes, which while powerful, aren't so powerful that I'd have a migraine from including them in any of my games, even when you get the ability to do them twice. But just for my personal feelings, it makes me a little sad that if this subclass is pushed forward, it very much shrinks the chances of having runesmithing being its own style of play that any class can potentially access. I know it's a nitpick, but I'm sure that I'm not the only person that would love the chance to scribble runes on a thing and make crazy magic happen regardless of my class. Either way, I do really enjoy this subclass and I can't wait to stab people with the power of the alphabet. Moving on to the greatest class in all of history, we have the Swarm Keeper Conclave for the Ranger. Where the Ranger has always been a very vestigial class in 5th edition, always just skidding around the outskirts of our vision and every once in a while buzzing right into your face to remind you that no, it hasn't died or found a way to leave quietly, this new conclave takes the ranger's insectoid nature to a much more literal degree, giving you the power to call forth the forces of nature spirits, little fey creatures that take on the fey's true form, annoying ass bugs. When you choose to go down the path of the swarm keeper, then you gain the mage hand cantrip, which manifests as a swarm of klepto fairies. You can let a bunch of fey crawl around and inhabit your body like it was free real estate, and you can use them to attack other creatures when they get too close, you can use the fey that are nesting on you to help increase your movement capabilities, you can condense all the stupid bugs into a ball of fey and then turn that ball into a tiny creature that'll go scout for you, and your last ability lets you drop a bubble down somewhere that'll deal damage, blind people, and heal you. I'm gonna say something controversial here, but I think the ranger is underpowered. The world may not be ready to hear it, but the features presented in the PHB are insignificant next to the power of the force. However, the subclasses presented in Xanathar's were clearly upgraded to make the power gap a little less heinous, and when compared to them, the Swarm Keeper actually feels right at home. It doesn't have the UNSPEAKABLE MIGHT of the Gloomstalker's first ability, but it also doesn't fall into the same companion pitfalls as the Beastmaster's skills. It's a decent middle-of-the-road subclass that will, in all honesty, probably fall into the pit of yeah, that's a subclass, that the Kensei Monk and the Cavalier Fighter found themselves in, but it's got fey flavoring, so while it'll definitely catch more eyes than those two, true Davy enthusiasts will understand that no good can become of consorting with fey. And finally, our last subclass of the article, and possibly articles for the foreseeable future, is the Revived Rogue. The Revived Rogue takes feeling dead inside to a whole new level, as like a millennial Hindu, it realizes that this is not its first life and that it still longs for death. As a Revived Rogue, you start out by gaining a spiritual understanding of death, granting you a natural resistance to poison, because poison damage is just a joke at this point, you can live without eating, drinking, or sleeping, and you can shoot out necrotic bolts of necrotic stuff that act as your new, edgy sneak attack feature. After that, you can talk to dead people and gain a smidgen of their power, you get advantage on death saves and can effectively cast the commune spell every time you make such a save, and you can use your cunning action to teleport around pretty much every turn that you want. Now I'm wondering what game the devs were playing that influenced them to write the subclass. Was it Dishonored, Shadow of Mordor, or both? Because this whole business is crazy spooky and a definitely unintended 
unintentional perfect fit for the last Unearthed Arcana of October. The subclass itself looks very fun, the abilities look more flavorful than overtly powerful, and while I'm sure that a lot of players are going to get themselves accidentally killed because of a misconception that revival from death means protection from death, I still think that the majority of players will enjoy being able to live out the absolute edgiest thing to hit D&D since the Blood Hunter. Overall, I think that this last UA is a fantastic end to the series. It wraps things up with a set of actually balanced subclasses, which is a breath of fresh air to me because we had to go through a bit of a slog to get there. And while I do hope that Wizards releases more Unearthed Arcana sooner rather than later, I'm hopeful for the future and for what should be a new splat book just on the horizon. But that'll about do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, don't allow Faye to infest your body without paying rent, and maybe support me on Patreon so that I can afford a vacation after my dutiful service to the world of D&D. But yeah, Davy out.